What's up, Musos? It's Ricky here. I am a rock guitarist, and I've performed on festivals, theaters, and arenas, and also played alongside with many artists, including Masterpiece, Connie Constance, and the Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter Martin Smith. I was also featured on the ITV Saturday Night Show Game of Talents as a rock guitarist. Over the next few weeks, we are going to dive into the topic of guitar tone. Topics like how to find your tone and how to create a better tone, or how you can use your existing gears to improve your tone. Ultimately, I hope this series will be able to help you find your tone, find your inner voice in playing the guitar. And just a disclaimer, what I'm sharing here is based on my personal experience in playing the guitar, live performance, and recording. So ultimately, take everything in with a grain of salt. Learn from the things that works for you and discard it if it doesn't work. And today, I'm going to talk about how a construct of a guitar could affect your tone. First of all, the obvious one is the type of wood. There are so many types of wood in the world of guitar, and the new ones and more sustainable ones are innovated and released frequently. For instance, my Seth Bacchus guitar is made out of obichi wood, which has a bright, resonating, and sustained tone. Joseph Trani's guitar uses older wood because he likes the tight low end and focused mid-range. I personally don't have a favorite wood because I'm not really there yet, perhaps in the future. <laughs> What I look for in a guitar is a guitar body that resonates well. Basically, a guitar that doesn't feel like you're playing or strumming a block of chopping board with strings on. A good guitar should sound full, fat, and well resonated when played acoustically. If you have a favorite type of wood, let me know in the comments down below. And I think by far, how the neck attaches to the body affects the tone the most because it affects how it carries the resonance across the guitar. For example, bolt on neck has a certain twang to it. Set necks has a certain warmth and fullness to the tone while snack through. I'm not so sure yet because I haven't tried it, but you can let me know if you've tried one. Next, we have pickups. This is an obvious one. Just for those people who don't know, there are so many pickups in the world. There are active pickups, passive pickups, single coil humbuckers, and so on. I can go on and on about how guitar pickups could affect your tone, but I guess you can do your research and try out different guitars to see what you like. Other than that, the pickup height plays a big part too, not just in loudness. Imagine a pickup as a microphone. The closer it is to the source, the brighter and more gain it is. The further it is, the muddier and softer sound you get from it. And you can learn all about the guitar and tone shaping from guitar masters like Santana and Tom Morello from Masterclass. With just $180, you get full access of all the classes for a year, and not just music or guitar. Other skills like writing and cooking and climbing too. For more information, check out the link in the description below. I've used quite a lot of brands of strings and even different kind of models before I decided to settle with this. Ernie Ball's Primo Slinky Gauge 9.5. For example, the Adario XL is a little bit too bright for me, and Elixir Strings has an extra coat that prevents it from resting, which I think it actually affects the tone a lot. Personally, don't really like it. And things like Flat Wound, Round Wound, and it affects your, the tone as well, and affects how you feel on the guitar too. And of course, next, we have the big one, Gauge Sizes. The Gauge Size really plays a big part in your tone. Thicker Gauge, resonates resonates better, but it's harsher to your fingers. So feel free to experiment with different strings before you settle with one. And you can try out different gauges of strings on one guitar, such as if you think that heavier gauge on the first or the sixth string would benefit your playing, go ahead and try it. And there are no rules, and feel free to experiment. And just when you think I mentioned the word resonate a little bit too much, the springs in your tremolo system plays a part in resonating sound as well. The number of strings affects it too. The more springs you have, have the fuller it sounds. In general, the whole guitar has to be balanced. It's like yin and yang, give and take, or day and night. And the same guitar would also sound totally different in another person's hand. Playing a recording with three quite different guitars for an extensive period of time. I've come to notice there are quite a huge difference on all of them. Three of my guitars has tremolo system on it. I've plugged them all through the same patches and effects and recorded. What I notice is my PRS has a muddier sound and usually I would have to add much more trouble in post-production to get the sound to cut through. And my Fender has a really heavy twang to it. It is less muddy, but it has much more mid-range to it, so sometimes it could get a little bit honkier. In post-production, I would usually have to t tune down the mids and boost a little bit of the treble and clean a little bit up on the bass as well. Whereas this Seth Bacchus guitar, so far I've been loving it because of how balanced the whole guitar is in terms of bass, mids, and treble range. And usually in 
post-production, I would only need to add a touch bit of treble to make it poke out even more in the mix. Check out this video where I talk about my Seth Backus guitar and also you'll be able to hear a short jam at the end. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification bell. Next week on the Tone Secret series, I will talk about how to create a good rhythm guitar tone. See you next week. Bye!